All right, good afternoon, Hi. Steve. I know everybody's talking about the return of Kevin, but what's it going to be like tonight to uh, be able to introduce Chris Paul to this crowd after being with the Suns and, of course, all the other teams he's played for? Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be exciting. Um, you know, we, we obviously our fans know Chris so well, and uh, nice to have him on our side instead of the, the opponent's side. I mean, he, we've always just had so much uh, respect for him, and we've had so many battles. Um, what I like about Chris is the way uh, he manages possessions and understands that every every possession matters, and uh, it's a dynamic that'll be good good for our team. Um, so he's a he's a great addition, and it'll be um, it'll be you know a little strange for our fans to see him you know wearing our jersey, but um, I think everybody will be excited because he's such a great player. Hi, Jay. Hi Steve. What did you learn by, by pacing the group with the shoot-arounds um, last season? And, and I know it's not the exact same roster, but is that – you didn't have one today, and, and is that sort of going to be your, your thinking, evaluate each, each step of the way in terms of what the, what the guys need? Yeah, we, we kind of go over this, um, you know, week by week um, as the schedule unfolds, talk to the performance team. Um, we base it on, you know, what we feel – our team needs that particular day. So there will be some shoot rounds. I would say more often than not, there won't be, um, but um, it'll be different based on circumstance. I'm not gonna ask you what your closing line is gonna be. I'm sure it, it can change, uh, but I'm not asking your starting lineup either. Do you have a set closing lineup in your head like you, you wanna go with, or is it just gonna be mostly feel? Yeah, it'll, it'll be feel. We've already had that talk with, with the team. Um, we got a lot of guys, especially when we're fully healthy. We've got a lot of guys who uh, are capable of, of closing, um, including Dario, uh, including J.K. Um, you know, guys who, if they're playing well and uh, they, the group that they're with is functioning, um, we just stay with that group. Our, our, it doesn't mean you know people are going to be happy every night, um, but um, the, our guys understand the depth is really a. A, a big factor for our team. It's one of the strengths of our team. And if you're going to be good, you have to be committed to, to the group and to the success of the group. So um, it'll make for some tough decisions at times for us. But, um, but I think our team is, um, is aware that, um, you know, this is a good problem to have and we, we have to, to deal with the individual stuff, um, you know, without letting it affect the team. Uh, season tip off seems like kind of a natural time to ask you about you know your contract situation um, any optimism that it might get done soon and and if not I mean is tonight somewhat of an artificial deadline of, of you you don't want to negotiate it after tonight um, yeah I, I just prefer not to talk about um, contract stuff I think it's just better that way um, I'm you know I think we have we have a great relationship um, uh, I do with front office and Joe and and uh, so I'm not I'm not worried about it at all. There's no deadline. We could do a contract extension in the last day of the season, but um, you know I'm not going to get into any details. Steve, how do you want to try and fill the void created by Draymond's absence? Well, uh, we've we've got the depth that I talked about. Um, both J.K. and Dario will take up. Uh, some of those minutes, and um, then we'll just see how each group is doing. And you know, early in the season, you, you're not exactly sure of your rotations anyway, so this is a time where you're um, mixing and matching. And, and um, so we'll do that, but we're very confident in the guys we have. Steve, you uh, talked here a little bit about Chris making his debut. What, what have you learned in the preseason about the combinations? Um, I mean, you've talked, I think, in the past, he and – he and Steph could be an interesting combination, or he could give bolster you guys when Steph's out. What have you sort of learned through the four or five games uh, in the preseason? I don't know that I've learned anything just because I've coached against Chris for so long. Um, so I I know him as a player, um, and um, it, it just feels like whatever lineup he's with, he makes better just because of his decision making and uh, his his awareness, his his intelligence. Uh, He's, uh, he's got a brilliant mind for the game. So we can put him with any group, and he makes that group better. Offense moved. Did, the points weren't coming, but did you like the way things were going there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a little clunky offensively for uh, much of the game, but that it felt like 
it was, it was it was mainly the ball just wasn't going in. I thought in the first half we missed a lot of shots, and then we sort of let that affect our our energy uh, late in the second quarter. They went on that big run, uh, but the guys really fought, competed. Um, we got some good shots, some good good possessions, um, did some good things, took care of the ball tonight. Um, we stopped fouling in the second half, which uh, helped us, you know, kind of re, uh, regain the momentum there in the third quarter. Uh, but uh, their offensive rebounds were, were killers. And uh, I thought Okogi uh, was, was the difference tonight. Just his offensive boards, um, you know, his hustle plays. Uh, I thought uh, he, he was really key for them. I was going to ask you about that. Did you feel like the, what they get, 17 offensive rebounds? Was that, yeah. I guess, number one, the key to the game? And also, like, what didn't you do, do you think, in that category? Well, there were a lot of long rebounds, and, and um, you know, it felt like they were beating us to uh, the uh, the ball, you know, kind of at the elbows, and they got some some length and some athleticism that that um, you know definitely factored in. But um, like I said, o- Okogi uh, had four of them, but it, it seemed like he had more even the way he was crashing, and uh, there, were, you know, sometimes he just took a body out, and then someone else got an offensive board. So um, yeah, that that felt like the key, but. Kind of a uh, a typical first game in a lot of ways. Um, you know, conditioning's not quite there. Rhythm isn't quite there. Um, so we'll be we'll be a lot better. So will they? You know, a few weeks from now. But um, just couldn't get it done tonight. Steve, what did you think of Chris's performance, especially in the third quarter when you guys kind of came back? Chris is so so good. I mean, uh, the way he controls the game. Um, you know, hits big shots when you need him. Nine assists. Um, you know, he he gives us a different dimension um, now, um, just with um, just just his point guard mentality. And uh, so it's 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 going to be really fun to to uh, coach him and to have him, you know, with our guys. And we'll start figuring out um, you know little nuances and and actions that we might want to uh, use with him, but. Um, He's just a great, great player, and uh, it's fun to have him on our side. You said before the game, you know, the, the closing unit's going to be something everyone has to understand. Yeah. It could be you close basically with Kaminga over Wiggins. Uh, did not look like Wiggins was, you know, at 100% or was it, was the, this was his kind of game. Was that mostly because of what you saw from Wiggins? Was that because of what you saw from Kaminga? I'm sure it was part of both. Uh, yeah, I thought both uh, Kaminga and, and uh, GP uh, were defending at a high level, and obviously you got a guard, you know, Kevin and and Book out there, and, and uh, so felt like those guys were um, were defending well, and so we went with them, um, and that's you know that's how it's going to be um, a lot of nights this year. It's like whoever's playing the best will will um, finish the game. W- Wiggins didn't get a defensive rebound. I mean, ha- have you seen him kind of? Do you feel like he's kind of easing into the season? I mean, what did you see from him in preseason? Into yeah, the- he's he uh, isn't at his best yet. Um, but um, like I said, first game, um, you know, I think exactly three weeks after practice started. Um, this is how it goes. Or sometime early in the season, you know, guys aren't you know quite in rhythm, and uh, Wiggs will be fine. It um, wasn't his best night, but um, yeah, he'll get better and better as we go. You had Clay on Durant a lot. It's mm-hmm. clearly started the game. You said Clay's going to be guarding power forwards. Uh, did you look kind of look forward to that match? But how did you think Clay did? I thought Clay was great. I mean, he just did his best to make things difficult on Kevin. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot you, you can do once he rises up and and you know gets that release um, way above his head. There's not not a whole lot you can challenge. So you just have to try to do your work early and and. Um, I thought Clay did that, you know, was physical with him off the ball, tried to force him into some tougher spots. And, um, you know, Kevin missed some that he'll make next time, but um, Clay was really solid defensively. Steve, you were obviously really comfortable with CP running the show, having the ball a lot. Uh, You know, obviously he's he's Chris Paul, but did you get a good glimpse of what's possible with him on the court, with Steph on the court? Was, Was tonight a good kind of picture of what it could be, maybe if shots are falling? Uh, yeah, but I think we need um, a lot more pictures. You know, it's like this is just the first glimpse um, in the regular season, and 
I think it usually takes 20 or 25 games till you really know your team and, and you know, kind of feel um, the actions that you need, the combinations that, uh, that you have. Um, but like I said, it was, it was great just to have Chris out there um, running the show. Obviously, Steph had the foul trouble, so we switched the rotation around. And, you know, Chris led a great run there in, in the third quarter. Um, but it's going to be a, a work in progress for us as, as we go this, these first few weeks, just trying to uh, find the right, right rhythm, right combinations, that kind of stuff. Coach, uh, back to that third quarter one run that uh, Chris led, you had mentioned a couple weeks ago that he was trying to fit in a little bit too much and you wanted Chris to just kind of be himself. Is that what you saw during that third quarter run a little bit? Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought he looked really comfortable tonight. I mean, obviously he didn't shoot it well, but the shots were, were, were there. The shots were good shots. Um, you know, nine assists, one turnover. Like, he, he controlled the game for much of, uh, much of the action. And, um, you know, we're one of the areas that we're really focused on to improve is our turnovers. We were last in the league last year, and Chris is going to help in that regard. Um, only 11 tonight, and um, we have to make sure we continue on that path. It's, uh, it's the um, it's turnovers, the fouls, um, and the rebounds. Those are, those are the keys. We actually nailed two out of the three, but the rebounding um, bit us tonight. You kind of searched out one of those fouls when, when you were in the bonus in the third. Uh, how nice is that to kind of now have that on your side? Yeah, you know, the, the league uh, changed the swipe through rule this year. And, you know, when we heard that, it was like, really? We, we finally have Chris Paul and now you change the swipe through? Like he's gotten us with that for, uh, for a decade. But um, that's part of, of Chris's game. He's so smart. He understands the angles. If somebody's, you know, running behind him, he's going to get in front of him and, and draw the foul and go to the foul, foul line, make free throws. And it's a, it's a nice uh, bit of gamesmanship that, that we add to our team. You challenged the uh, Kaminga offensive foul. Was that because he uh, was acting the way he was, or was that from from the bench? From uh, the bench, we, so we have a process where um, Jacob Rubin is behind the bench and and uh, he's kind of monitoring it. He does a great job, and he felt strongly that um, that they would overturn it. And um, I never saw the replay. I, I I kept looking up at the scoreboard. I was waiting for a replay. I don't know if that's a rule. Um, you know, we're not allowed to see it or something, but. Um, you know, the, the, it's always a, a risk when you do it, but we trust our process and uh, just didn't go our way.